When bliss imbues all faculties, delirium can enjoy no comfortable home. Bliss, that electric phenomena which brings one his own new set of supersensory abilities, senses keen to all vibrations, senses that perceive a simple grain of sand as a dancing miracle, ears of a moth, hearing so keen as to outdo the predator bat, listen to the ants chew the leaves, the worms push themselves up into the sun, eyes of a peregrine falcon, no to dull, astral lights of hues unseeable to man, yes, phosphorescent even, and not just color, but a field, not a field, no an aura, mm, that's not it either, is it? No, something entirely its own, laid atop this reality, although reality is the most wrong way one can put it. Altogether nonsense, senses and perception are profane. What we have here is an understanding, a knowing, an experience of the divine. The truth is, all wants, wills, and intentions of the animate and inanimate are but frequency. Those things called thoughts are such very real creatures. All is as a flowing ocean. Forgive even the word ocean. Our senses, we so praise, are but low resolution reductionist hoopla. We are but bodies of light searching for our astral eyes. Our second sight, our vision capable of seeing sound, hearing taste, and touching smell. As if one needs any reassurance that your narrator has lost his mind, let me smile without rebuttal. The framework can indeed dissolve away. Yes, the picture is a portal, and behind it, a universe. Yet even that is a framework, isn't it? Universe. Una, meaning one better, said the all. Perhaps verse is more appropriate. Yes, because it speaks to the divine. A musically mathematical verse. A verse by the hand of the creator, all of which has been written and will be and has been all at once laid atop itself, for the linear thing, time, happens in every moment. What a ride. When one speaks directly from the heart, skipping over the throat and tongue and all other animal parts, well, then one may be in divine communication. What so many know and have experienced is beyond auditory, olfactory and neural whateverism, it, in all its complexities, cannot be understood in a word or a thousand. And so I leave you with no further sophistry. The human is a humid sack of water.